River pollution causes fish to die. Festival to promote local farmers. And government challenge to roll out a vaccination program. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Sunday's news. River pollution at the Camp Welch River system in central province has left fish dying and people looking for clean water for drinking and cooking. It was believed that the chemical contamination is a result of a landslide, logging or mining activities upstream may have caused this pollution. There are calls for more testing and investigation to determine the cause of this river pollution. The people are also appealing to responsible authorities to support them with food supplies and clean drinking water. Yesterday, officers from Rego District Administration with members of the media visited Sarawakena village located along the Camp Welch River. The locals spoke of the challenges they are facing as a result of this water pollution. The river has become muddy, smelly and boiling with varieties of fish dying and floating to the surface and it is not fit for human consumption. For washing and drinking from this water, uh, our councillor advised us not to, not to do so. People are still collecting. At the side of the banks, there's still uh, fish that are already been rotten and smell is coming up. And I think after one week or two weeks, our community will be spoiled. I think the situation is same from Gaunumu upstream going all the way to Kalo. This change in the river system started over three days ago when villagers saw fish dying and floating to the surface with the water becoming oily and muddy. According to the locals, it was believed that this could be the result of a landslide, mining or logging activities upstream. But more testing and investigation is needed to determine the cause of this water pollution. The villagers are now fetching water for drinking and cooking from creeks in the bushes. And this is now a challenge for them as they have to walk long distances. I'm a long way. So, outside Mary is I'm strong. I'm going to inside the bus. I'm going to go and come back. So, outside I'm not fit. I'm not going go. So, all one one Mary is also going to go and kiss me. I heard about that story that there's a landslide. And uh, I know there's been some minor landslide down the history. But, however, this one has been massive. And I am concluding that there is illegal mining activity upstream. With Kempfels River being one of the biggest river systems in central province, there are many villages located along the river. According to the locals, there are over 25 schools located in villages along this river with an estimated population of over 10,000 people who have access to this river system. Schools in the area have also been affected as students are forced to look for clean water. And they are calling on responsible authorities to support them with food supplies and clean drinking water. We're looking at a uh, uh, school starting from uh, Gaunomu and also uh, further upstream, Gaunomu down all the way to Kalo. So we're looking at around uh, 25 to 30 schools uh, that will be affected. Uh, and uh, looking at the population uh, all the way from the source water from the it's approximately 10,000 to 8,000. People are going to be affected uh, by the situation. Rayon Lakingu National, MTV News. After being disrupted for much of 2020 due to COVID-19 pandemic restrictions, the Walk and Yoga for Life program in NCD was launched for 2021 this morning. NCD Governor Post Pakop urged city residents to be part of the walk to promote healthy living and positive lifestyles. Under the theme Walk for Love, today's event coincided with Valentine's Day with participants walking from Mar Barracks to Ella Beach. <laughs> Walk participants arrived from as far away as Sogeri at Murray Barracks and as early as 4 a.m. It was the first time for the Sogeri participants to take part in the walk. walk for life! MTV News caught up with them whilst waiting for the walk to commence. So we prepared ourselves in the afternoon and by 2 a.m. this morning we were already up and then we took off at three and by half four we were already here at Mare Barracks. Okay, that's like I'm coming up, Lomipla, put him low, help Lomipla, 
Because me plaha mamas no go through. Me plaha ber lapun na. Like han ba bagarap na stop ta sol. Somehow em idea em kissing. In the wall. All ha mamas lo desla. Me too me ha mamas no go through because me come up 16 na stop. As the sun dawned in the horizon, Walk participants, including NCD Governor Poes Pakop, in red T-shirts with a large banner in front, walked on the Poraporana freeway down to the Harbour City area, chanting words of hope for a happy and healthy life. And the marching band comprising youths from Koki led the walk. Eventually, the walk participants arrived at Paga Point, where the police band took over in leading the walking party. And the arrival at Ella Beach was coloured with entertainment performances depicting love in society. 45 days ago, we celebrate the new year. Now we are launching our programme to kick off the rest of the year. City manager is here, me as chairman and governor of our capital city, I'm also here. We have a great year to go. We have started early. Your municipal government and CDC, we don't wait until April. We don't wait until March. We don't wait until February. We are already starting. New year, new energy, new life. You may want to hunt us all the walk is part of the Active City Development Program and has been carried out over the last five years. And with its launching this morning for 2021, program organizers say it will be a weekly event on Sunday mornings over much of the year. I am really very happy that we managed to launch the program uh, for 2021. Uh, we are looking forward to uh, bigger events, like for example, uh, there's going to be like a International Women's Day next, and that's going to be a really big walk. Then we're going to have uh, International Environmental Day, and there's just going to be so many themes uh, with regards to walk and yoga for life. And I really encourage all the people to come and join because you're going to learn so much. So actually, um, I, this is my first time to be in the in the. Um Walk for Life program, and I am telling you, I feel amazing right now. I feel great. I feel fit. Yeah. The walk took place on Valentine's Day, as well as during the week which Chinese New Year is being celebrated in the city as part of the lunar calendar. <laughs> Governor Pakop said due to COVID-19 pandemic restrictions still in place, particularly for international travel, he is encouraging the international community in the city to showcase their culture as well as part of the Walk and Yoga for Life program in which he aims to bring the world to Port Moresby. Two, one, zero! Our program is here by launch. Let's have a great year. Every week, Sunday, we come and have a festival. Dennis Orere, National MTV News. CPL Group Stop and Shop hosted the Root Crop Festival at Badili's Stop and Shop yesterday. The festival was launched last Saturday at Waigani's Stop and Shop. It is mainly to promote local farmers and their produce. The Root Crop Festival was launched last week at Waigani Stop and Shop and will continue on to other stop and shop centers in Port Moresby. The festival continued yesterday at Badili Stop and Shop with local farmers present to showcase their produce. The festival is an initiative of the management to promote our local farmers and their produce. Promote and showcase them and bring them out. We, we decided to start off this festival as a means to really display the different types of produce that uh, we have in the country. Stop and Shop not only buys produce from the farmers, they assist the farmers in terms of banking and other services. Most of these farmers are uneducated and do not have access to banking. CPL tries to make that possible for them. Apart from just providing a market for them to sell the produce, we, we want to really you know, we work with them go beyond just providing a market. We actually go to their farms to see how they're growing it, um, provide some sort of technical advice to them, um, 
to work with other institutions like FPDA to go and you know, provide them training on nursery, on pest management. So also making bells, we call farmers amamas. We plan to go sit down the market long time and wait for that day, and then the next day na kaike bagarap no ga. All by same speed, money going to the account we plan because. Through the post, we pay the money in the market. We pay the freight as Gordon's market. We pay the way we no save too much and other cowgirl and this place. We no save the mama only money. This is also CPL's initiative to import less when they can buy locally, helping both the local farmers and the nation as a whole. They've been providing us with good quality produce. We want to stop importing our products from overseas. We can produce here. And with the government's aim of you know trying to take back PNG and all that, you know, we decided to put more focus into our local farmers. Gertrude Gabi, National MTV News. Vaccines are deemed as the way forward for the COVID-19 pandemic in which the virus has claimed more than 2 million lives around the world and more than 100 million positive cases recorded. Papua New Guinea has recorded just under 1,000 positive cases so far with 10 known deaths and more than 800 recovered cases. However, with some uncertainties that have surrounded the global pandemic over the past year, some people doubt the safety and integrity of the vaccination campaign around the globe. And in Papua New Guinea, whilst vaccination for COVID-19 is yet to be rolled out and given less number of cases and deaths compared to other countries, some people say vaccination is not necessary and that they do not feel safe to participate. Pfizer and AstraZeneca vaccines have become popular in such a short space of time in countries like Australia and New Zealand, given that they are COVID-19 vaccines. In simple and generic terms, a vaccine is a product that stimulates a person's immune system to produce immunity to a specific disease, protecting the person from that disease. Vaccines are usually administered through needle injections, but can also be administered by mouth or sprayed into the nose. A science academic from the University of Papua New Guinea defined vaccine in this way. Uh, vaccination is one of the processes where you introduce the body to a dead particle from a pathogen. This is causing microorganisms. And the good thing about vaccination is that it pre-introduces you to the particular environment of the live pathogenic disease-causing organism. Once you come into uh, a real contact with the organism, you are already pre-prepared. Your system is already pre-prepared, so very quickly it mounts an immune response against uh, that particular organism. Whilst Papua New Guinea is yet to jump on the bandwagon of the COVID-19 vaccination campaign, it is a challenge for the government and its partner agencies to roll out the vaccination campaign. This is mainly due to lack of confidence in the vaccination campaign by average Papua New Guineans as well as some professional groups with some people saying it is not necessary. In spite of this, Health authorities in the country are determined to roll out the vaccination campaign. At this point in time, as I mentioned, we will not preempt what the, the, the vaccines that we will be rolling out. There are, you know, the requirement of each vaccine, but the vaccines have the I think the of the uh, 50 vaccines, um, uh, the four vaccines uh, have been particularly in USA and UK and other countries through what we call emergency use authority vaccines and that's what had been done in USA followed by UK. In, and for in PNG, we have health department being the national regulatory authority and the process of accepting the vaccines. Um, but at this point in time, those informations are before our government through NEC. Uh, for us, our main strategy at the moment is the new normal or the new blood passing. Um, but for now, when the vaccine is not here, we keep telling people, our vaccine at the moment is RM Toka. You need to listen. And when you listen, you need to make sure follow those messages because those are proven evidence-based strategies that have worked globally. And globally, you have 50 vaccines on the different stage of trial. 
And uh, um, one vaccine already approved by the WHO emergency use list, and one or three other vaccine was approved by the stringent uh, regulatory authority. For the COVID-19 vaccine and vaccination in PNG, I have three messages to convey. The first message is that the COVID vaccine will help to keep, uh, keep us from getting COVID-19. As all COVID-19 vaccine currently available has been shown are highly effective at prevent COVID-19. The United Nations resident coordinator says with experience of rolling out the vaccination program during the recent polio outbreak, he is confident of successfully delivering the vaccination program for COVID-19 in PNG. So we won't just going to get any random vaccine and start injecting it into people. Ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen because the government will not allow it and because the government will work with all its international partners to ensure that that is, is taking place. So communication is going to be fundamental and media outlets will have to play a huge role in ensuring that everyone not only understands, allay fears and prepare everyone to come forward, especially the ones that have a priority need. Uh, we've done it together for polio. We've done it. One of the most successful vaccine campaigns just happened in this very country just a year and a half ago. In six months, 3.5 million children under 15 were vaccinated and the polio outbreak was stopped. So what is the government's plan in implementing the COVID-19 vaccination program? So at this point in time, there is again through the WHO defect and the department, we're taking consideration of 20% of the population and the first being the, um, the health workers, the frontline health workers, um, then our age, um, what age group we should uh, consider is the issue that the working committee, technical working committee will decide the moment the government gives the endorsement of the deployment uh, plans that we have. And again, the, um, those with high com comorbidities like those with diabetes, hypertension, and of course we consider those that um, of the uh, ex extractive industries, mining and companies that and fly in, fly out our international borders, those will be considered under this EUA. Health authorities say COVID-19 vaccination in the country will be optional and will initially target 20% of the population who are considered to be high-risk groups. These high-risk groups will include frontline healthcare workers, elderly people with chronic underlying conditions and those working in the extractive industries. Health authorities also say from data available, the number of confirmed cases tend to be higher in provinces which report doing more testing. There is a steady increase identified in influenza-like illnesses and severe acute respiratory infections around the country with swabbing and testing of these individuals for COVID-19 rarely done. We have just over 43,000 tests done so far. That's for a population of say eight or nine million. It's a, it's a very low uptake. Uh, yes, we are working together with the PHS and the provinces to make sure that we increase the uptake of testing. Um, you would see that a few provinces that uh, Secretary rightfully said that they've been doing the test are actually picking up a lot of cases. So especially uh, around the mines in Lihir, in New Island, uh, in Octedi, uh, but also in NCD, don't forget NCD, is, we still have community transmission. Um, West Limited, we had an outbreak at the middle of uh, December that continued until and is still continuing. Um, and then spillover from that actually went over to East Limited and also New Island. But cases from West Limited were also detected in, 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 in West Limited. Uh, we have a new province that came on board uh, at the end of last week, as probably you, can, you, you heard from the reports. Medang has now confirmed two cases. Uh, we expect more cases from Medang. Uh, we're just verifying some figures. The health secretary says four vaccines from the COVAX facility are before the National Executive Council in the approval process. But what does the public think about the government's vaccination program? The general public have expressed mixed views in various ways via social media and through professional platforms. Some are having doubts about the disease actually being in PNG and also not having confidence in the vaccines. MTV News spoke to some of them. Meeting with them, 
Det er sikkert, som er kreativt sikkert. You know, sickness where mipla mipla she, I was a tumbuna blow mipla na, I was a generation blow mipla no got this la sick. So I'm something where all China like test him this la something lo all man or this la kind of also also test him so lo country blow liat mipla I'm Papua New Guinea I'm I'm so far I'm no got plenty of die come up loza COVID-19. So all like test him I'm mipla you know Guinea pick blow na all but test him this la product blow lo mipla. So think to lo me me against lo this la something. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I'm all right, lo, me, me can use him, but the first thing first, all he need, lo, test him me past time. What I mean, I'm not lo, kiss him nothing without a uh, test. I don't like it, I'm not going to kiss him. I don't feel confident, I'm not going to kiss him. Unless I'm supposed to talk to good, explain him good, I'm not going to make him more than I'm going to kiss him. I think I'm all right, lo, mix him, but else, it's not necessary to mix him. I don't... I really uh, I think that COVID-19 is uh, uh, that's a real disease that coming into our country. Uh, it just uh, uh, I don't believe in that. But others think it is necessary to take part in the vaccination program for protection purposes. It, it is a must, you know. We should have it, you know, we should have some here in Papua New Guinea uh, to stop the spread. Huh? Because, you know, if it spreads to uh, people like my age group, certainly it's going to be devastating, you know, it's going to kill a lot of people. Yeah, my mama must look at Marasin. Now, all picking in it too, all picking in, I mean, all get a man married, I was a small camp talk like Simon Plamarasin come now, by all give him to me. Me plab all get a mama master so logo kiss him, lo protecting you me. Certain scientists in the country have expressed that Papua New Guineans seem to have some natural immunity to COVID-19 in which they say vaccination can only be rolled out if really necessary and if enough data is available to prove that vaccination is required. Uh, in simple terms, vaccination is only given to the group of people that require vaccination. According to what I said, we have certain level of immunity and uh, it's okay you can get vaccination if you do not have some level of protection health authorities however disagree with this and say the sars cov2 virus the virus that causes covid19 disease does not respect race color or religion when, when people are saying that um, we are uh, we are immune that's not true um, so we are, we are, we are. For us, we are, we are working as if we are in the same exposure as probably other countries. As you can see, the Americas at the moment are almost over close to 50 million, now 45 million. Um, our region is probably the lowest region with the, the number of cases, but uh, with global travel, we are at exposure and there is everybody else. Certain members of the public also expressed concern over the whole vaccination campaign saying it may have underlying motives. No good backside or this vaccine you got not all papers or or something where all like test them law. Some you know no good time by some you know COVID nineteen. No good got not recent or just some the product come now or like test them. And so many questions still remain at this point in time on the COVID-19 vaccination program by the government and health authorities. Is vaccination really necessary for Papua New Guinea? Which vaccine will be administered on Papua New Guineans? And are the vaccines under the COVAX facility safe for Papua New Guineans? These questions will have to be dealt with by relevant authorities in the coming weeks and months. Tokai Sports
Welcome to Chukai Sports. It was a top of the table clash in the Southern Conference of the Women's National Soccer League as second placed NCD Hikari United took on third placed Palm City FC. Both teams played out an exciting one all draw, maintaining their current positions on the table for another week. NCD Hikari United played out an exciting one all draw against Palm City FC in the round eight clash of the WNSL's Southern Conference in Port Mosby. The match could have gone the way of Hikari in their famous red jerseys, but the players were guilty of missing golden opportunities to win the match. It was a tussle in midfield as both teams moved the ball around, hoping to use the speed of their forwards. Well, they have a lot of opportunity in the second half. I was thinking that they should have scored 10 goals in the 15 minutes, but I really don't know what happened. But that's football. We have to accept it and work very hard in our two remaining games. Our defenders did very, very well. I'm very impressed with them. Our finishing, my goodness, 10 uh, definite goals. Even the keeper is not there, they can score. So the coaches have to work hard on our finishing and a teamwork, you know. They have to share the ball, they have to share to their sisters when they are there and pass the ball and to score. That's the only thing I believe in a teamwork. Today they didn't do it and they pay the price and they drew. And I think in many ways it helps them to work harder in our two remaining games. Palm City were first to score through PNG rep Fatima Rama, who went around the out of position Hikari goalkeeper to score, giving the lead to Palm City 1-0. Indeed, Rama continued to travel their Akari defense as she used their pace and control on the ball to find space in Akari territory. <laughs> Pomp City held the lead 1 0 going into the half time break. The second half saw Akari equalize from a corner kick, with Fita Ayapi finding the back of the net. The game eventually ending 1 0. Yeah, we know that in every team we take, we always remind the girls that they are the top, the best of every association. We have to take every team as a champion too. So today the result comes on on a very strong side. Haxtilovai, Chukai Sports. And that story wraps up Chukai Sports, the weather report for the next 24 hours after these messages. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Partly cloudy with possible thundery showers in Port Moresby. Rain showers at times in Daru. A few showers and partly cloudy weather in Kerma, partly cloudy with possible shower or two in Alutau, and rain showers easing to cloudy periods in Popandita. In the Mamasa region, cloudy with a few showers in Lay, some late rain showers easing to cloudy periods in Middang, occasional rain showers and thunderstorms easing in Wewak, and rain showers to cloudy periods in Vanimon. In the New Guinea Islands region, partly cloudy with a shower or two in Lorengau, a shower or two then partly cloudy in Kaviang, some rain showers and possible thunder then cloudy weather in Kokopo and Rabaul, rain showers easing to cloudy periods in Kimbe and possible showers then partly cloudy weather in Buka. And in the Highlands region, cloudy with some rain showers right across the region in Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundi, Awamendi and Wabeg. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that's the way it is this Sunday, the 14th of February 2021. On behalf of the entire MTV News team right around the country, pleasant viewing. Have a safe working week. Good night.